contrast, sharpness and color with one method. Let's explore the Divide Blur Pass. A common method to sharpen an image is using a high pass filter. The high pass filter is basically a blurred inverted image applied to itself in average blend mode. When this is applied in linear light blend mode, the image gets sharper as darks and lights are made stronger in the edges. We can modify this high pass setup to only include the darker areas by just dividing the blurred image with itself. We get a very similar result as the high pass, but this time the neutrals are white instead of mid gray and the darker edges are shown. Instead of using the linear line blend mode, we can now use the multiply blend mode to sharpen the image based on the darker edges. So I have created two groups. The first group uses the divide, multiply, sharpen, and the second group the high pass linear light method. Maybe it's not visible in the video, but the high pass sharpen is much stronger due to the effect of the brightened edges, which are especially noticeable in the hair area. When we go to the high pass version and adjust the blend range of the high pass layer, so that the brighter areas are not used, and compare it now with the divide blur pass method, there is no difference. As mentioned, the divide blur multiply only makes the darker edges stronger. By the way, if we use brighter areas of the high pass only, we get an opposite effect, where the bright edges really pop out. If we change this to a smoother transition though, we actually get a very nice effect. But enough about the high pass. Let's apply and play with the divide blur pass. I'll remove the existing groups and start from scratch to show you how to create it. We start by making two duplicates of our image. After selecting both of them, we can group them. On the top image in the group, we can add a live blur effect, like the Gaussian blur. I'll use a radius of around 1.5 pixels. We're also going to add a levels adjustment and move this inside the top image in the group. This will be used later to fine tune the final effect. We can now select the image with the blur and the levels adjustment and change its blend mode to divide. If all goes well, we get this sketch-like image. The blur we added determines how detailed it is, so if you're not seeing much right now, adjust the radius of the blur filter to control the strength. We can now select the group and change the blend mode of the group to multiply to get the sharpen effect. As mentioned, we can go to the levels adjustment we created earlier and adjust the white level to around 90 and the output level to around 10 to get a very nice sharp contrasty look, which works especially well if you have bright images. Here is the before and here is the after. Pretty awesome. Now there is much more we can do. Instead of using the multiply blend mode, which darkens the image, we could also use the soft line blend mode on the group. This would probably brighten the image way too much, so in order to fix that, we can add a levels adjustment to the group and lower the white output level to 50. This will make sure that the whites from the divide are now mid-gray, so they don't have an effect on the soft light blend mode. Again, by going to the levels adjustment in the blurred image, we can get some nice effects. Compared to the multiply version, the soft light version also allows to brighten the image creatively. If you have my InstaFilter 2025 pack, there is a couple of macros available which apply these steps in one click. So the first one is the divide blur in multiply mode, which creates a nice sharpened contrasty look. Next, we have the soft light version, which is a bit more contrasty compared with the multiply version. Remember, after you applied this, you can open up the group and adjust the levels adjustment or the blur to your liking. Then we have an extreme black white version which as you might have guessed works best on a black and white image. So let's quickly switch to a black and white image and apply this macro. Pretty cool, a bit over the top and dramatic. For fun, I also added two gold variants, which are just the extreme black and white variant with a gradient map on top to get a gold look. Depending on your image, they might work well out of the box, but probably you will need some fine tuning to get them work. But these are just for fun and they might work if you need a quick gold look. Here is another example of a dramatic black and white effect. What I really like about this method that it can add dramatic contrast and sharpen the image at the same time, which in a way makes the contrast even stronger. Now for the bonus tip. This image is pretty nice, but let's apply our soft light version of the macro. 
This brings some contrast and saturation to the image, but look what happens when we add a black and white adjustment on top of the levels adjustment in the divide blur image. Wow, that's amazing. A bit too much, but look at the colors. With the top levels adjustment in the group, we can control and fine tune it to our liking. So we added contrast, color, and sharpness in one go. Another use case is selectively to add the effect to your image. For example, in this image, I applied the black and white extreme variant of the macro, which as expected would be too much. But instead of applying to the whole image, we can use a mask so that the effect is only applied to the sky area. Pretty awesome. So I hope you like this video, and as mentioned, the macros are available in my Insta 2025 macro set, which you can download from the description below. Thanks again for tuning in, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave, and see you in the next video. You're still here. Here is a funny video I have found today on the interweb. Be cool and take care.